When do we get two parts? Welcome to another edition of Mass Mads and Mam. Oh, I'm your host, the Outlaw L.A. Red. I'm taking Christ. my name back, damn it, Vampiro. I'm no longer Outlaw L.A. Red. I'm going to go back to Outlaw L.A. Red. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at JustinHarvey75. You can find the entire show on all social media at MMMShow75. And uh, we have fun stuff to talk about. We have some all in happening this weekend we had a, a actually a surprisingly good episode of lucha underground considering it featured very little wrestling um in the second half of the show and uh we also are going to talk about the contender tonight and hopefully eric van wagnon um who you guys all know from lucha underground fame also produces the contender hopefully he will stop by for a little bit to talk about that show um so anyway where are you guys going everyone's in a car right now byron what are you doing i'm in the middle of darkness and i'm shut up all right just shut up keep going oh jesus are you being kidnapped by a, a, it sounds like somebody with a tennessee accent what's I going just, on I just like that uh he still can we can still understand everything he's saying with byron's tiny penis in his mouth <laughs> it's terrible. Sorry. You hey. <laughs> oh shit, it's Urban. What's going on? Oh, Urban, what up? <laughs> so it's you guys true. kidnapped We're Byron? Man. Where's J Man? Uh passed out. Passed out. I, I like it's that. Birthday. Everyone wish happy birthday on Mass for Heels and also at Booze and Fights. Huh? Something like that. I don't know. I don't think he's at Last Real Heels anymore, is he? He changed his. No, it's like LHR Mem- Legends or LHR Memorial. No, that's Urban's old one. I I don't know who's this who anymore. <laughs> J Man has like something with booze and fights or something now. I don't even know it anymore. We'll have to find it and we'll post it on the the. Or maybe he doesn't want y'all to find him. I don't know. Let him post that shit himself. He got more followers than we do. He wants everyone to say hi to him again. He's super friendly and he likes everyone who's, um, you know, everyone. everyone he likes everyone. Hi, especially, uh, you know, the people who he muted and blocked. I like everything about J-Man except where he lives because there's no, no internet. internet. There's no damn internet. You know, we don't get the heels anymore because of it. We don't get J-Man guesting on this show to talk MMA with me be- anymore because of it. I hate, I hate, I hate that part of Tennessee. That's all the I can hills, say. The hills are back, baby. Yeah, what's up with that? Did you guys do a podcast this week, Urban? Yeah, it's already out, man. I got to check. Dude, I was working all week, man. I barely had time to get ready for this podcast. <laughs> but I I'm promise you, ahead. I will definitely check it out. I'm going to go ahead and plug it. It's the last for the hills on YouTube. It's unfancy the podcast, man. Unfancy. I listen to it. There's a lot of foul language if you're into that sort of thing. Hey, so do we get to see your beautiful face <laughs> if it's on YouTube? No, no. Uh. Oh. Who does video podcasts? That's me. <laughs> video podcast, whatever. Um, hey, I want to send a, a, a shout out to a supporter listener to the show um rebecca lock who has been in the hospital for the last couple of days so we want to send her all of our love and hope everything is okay girl yeah get hope better soon. Right. get well rebecca hopefully listen to the show make doesn't make you feel shittier uh <laughs> it would to me it makes me feel shittier but that's just because i know all of you personally. yeah jimmy you didn't get to watch the contender tonight yet did you no uh I've been out, and also I don't have epics, so. Oh my god! There's that. Did you yeah, have sling? Because I added it to my sling for. Like I added it to my sling for five bucks. That's it. I don't even have sling. Was this oh, the episode god. that you and I attended? Or yes, it, okay. yes, in fact it was. So you actually know all about this fight, um, and hopefully, even though we'll stop by here in a minute, we can chat a little bit about it. Um, I'm going to post this link real quick because I realized uh, maybe I already did post the link. Did I post? The you link? have it on Daily Motion. We can watch it bootleg. <laughs> oh, hey! Wow, really? None of that talk around here. No. Besides, there, there, people are getting a little strict with Daily Motion. I can't watch certain shows while I'm at work because Daily Motion's been pulling certain lucha shows off of the fucking site. Yeah, I have. I've heard about that. People are having to find alternative ways to watch it. 
I can, we can't hear a thing you're saying, Byron. You are just totally all Tennessee static right now, he brother. He sounds yeah. like gargling a robot's ball sack right now. Urban is not a robot. He is flesh and blood. He is a real boy. I don't know. I heard he's not a man. He's a machine. Do I have him confused, have him confused with someone else? Yes, I think you do. So Wait. is he the one that has sex with Melissa Santos? No, oh, no. that's that's Brian Omega. Right? Uh, uh. That name oh. sounds like Who's he ever been? What are, your, what are your bets for all in? I bet a bunch of nerds don't take showers. I bet people smell like fucking shit. Is that really so the, the, question, the, the big deal? The question is, 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 I think it would be. I mean, I the question so is, long. is all in worse of a, con like, which? Oh, we lost Jim now, too. He was going to ask. Jim, Jim has an active social life. You got to keep up. Let me he was you. getting fired up, too. I sounded like we were about to get a hot take. Jim, are you still there? What happened? I'm still here. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, were, you were going all hot take on us, and then you dropped out. Basically, which is worse for hygiene? Access or StarCast? StarCast, 100%, because I've been to a wrestling convention before, and Jesus fucking Christ. Um, speaking fun. of wrestling conventions, isn't Expo Lucha happening right sure now? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm sure all three people there are having a great time. Oh, no, I heard it picked up a little bit after uh, work hours. I think a lot of people were driving out of L.A. and had to work, so some of the earlier events were a little dismal, but um, I heard that it uh, actually I stand corrected. I, I hope that the four people are having a good time. Correct. For the tens in <laughs> attendance and the dozens watching around... No, I think I, I hope it's going good. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna check some of it out later. Um, I, mean, I wanted good. to go. You know, uh, going wasn't in my future though because I had to work today, and then I have a lot to do next week. But um, yeah, you know. I'm just kind of dead inside right now between student teaching and working and school. So I've been having. I'm just, I'm just thinking about all the money I saved by not going to All In or Expo Lucha. You know what? I thought you were going to All In. I forgot that you changed your mind. I originally was. So I had tickets in my in my cart for All In, and then because of because the site was so shitty of all, because of all the people on it, by the time I got to the payment screen, the ticket it was sold out. So I was shit out of luck. Well, damn, that sucks. But you know what? Blessing in disguise. I would have spent a shit ton of money. I don't need to worry about that right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Spending a shit ton of money places. Monster Palooza is in two weeks, ladies and gentlemen. What goes on at a Monster Palooza? A lot of fucking. Um, some monsters. Uh, there's some paloozaing. Uh, uh, you know, it's a horror convention. You get to see some monsters. Uh, I'm gonna get to meet Doyle from the Misfits. That's fucking dope. And uh, yeah, yeah. He's what, the is, what is paloozering? I don't know that term. Uh, it's kind of like a fuck train in reverse. Gotcha. Wait, what? That sounds like a Tuesday night for Jim. It sounds like a Saturday Tuesday night for Jim. Doyle from the Misfits, so it's a real misfit. If anybody was wondering, um, was Casey is our resident vampiro that gets us our explicit rating on this show. Oh, should I fucking bust a nasty ass fart right now too? Oh, Somebody Jesus. play my music. The best, the best is that he can't even confirm if that was him or not. Uh, <laughs> hey, dude, I say it was him because he he's vegan and vegans probably have weird ass farts. They're probably really loud. I think I've I heard smell. almond milk will do that to you. I'm sure it was probably like. Matt Stryker because when he's not like not being good at the wrestling name game, he's just farting up a storm. <laughs> oh snap! To my boy uh, Mike Bosniak, who's uh, uh, watching. I did not catch the Ultimate Fighter yet. I am going to watch it, and and I will address exactly what you're talking about next week because I have heard tale of. Um, what's going on with with Maurice Green? Yeah, that. Oh yeah, Justin. This week, that was a big. Deal. Justin's the only one who has access to the chat right now. No, oh, am I the only one? So let me let me go look at. Well, that was from a a, a, a tweet, a twit, a whatever you call a an individual moment of someone sending me something on Twitter. What is that's that what, called? That's what. 
a, a, a twit. Yeah. A twit. Wow. No. <laughs> wow. A twit. Wow. Oh Jesus. You know, I I just want to go one week without mentioning that fucking show. I know I'm the one that usually mentions it. All right. Well, I got you guys here before before we mute Byron for the rest. I don't even know what Byron's saying right now. I want to talk about this. I want to talk about Lulu Underground. Do it. That was it. Was a good episode. It was a great episode. I didn't watch. I love Sunny Kiss kick major ass. Oh, you know what? I already yelled, fuck you, Dragon. I quit that. So that's his spot now. What? I can't hear anyone. Oh, I can't either. Why does Casey have shitty internet? He's not even in a car. So, Sunny Kiss, I heard, yelled, fuck you, into the mic. And, uh, oh, so he definitely did. So now, oh, yeah. Uh, that's his spot, not Sexy Stars. So there you go. Yes, Byron. He's or, taking it back, Casey. They are reclaiming everything, Sexy Star, one episode at a time on your behalf. So it's <laughs> too little, too late. I didn't watch this week, so you know I was at work, you know, all upset because I couldn't illegally download the show and uh, I couldn't <laughs> watch it on my TiVo yet. I mean, I I have it on DVR. I do watch it legally. It's just that you know sometimes I need something to do at work. At I'm work, and you can't out. take your DVR with you, is what you're saying. I can't. No, and I can't remotely access <laughs> no. this family. All right. Well, let me let me give you a little bit of a recap, and we'll talk about some of these moments. The uh, the first big thing that happened was uh, Joey Wrestling, also known as Joey Mercury from the wonderful no. WWE tag team of M and M. Um, showed up and replaced PJ Black, who eagerly stepped aside for some reason as Johnny Mundo's best man. <laughs> I don't know why PJ was so eager to get out of it. He, he seemed pretty happy about it. Most people would be like, hey, what the? Because PJ is uh, a good friend and he knows how close Joey and Johnny are. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah they, you know, their gimmick used to be that they used to fuck the same girl at the same time. Um, but uh, <laughs> so what you're saying is PJ. Wanted out of the Eiffel Tower. He did not yeah. want to be. He didn't want, he didn't want a way, base. He didn't want a base for the Eiffel Tower. Is what you're hilarious, saying. Hilarious, hilarious Molina reference from Stryker. Yeah, I don't know if anyone caught that, but that was great. I don't. I don't know if any reference. Stryker what was it? It would be would basically uh, when when Joey when Joey Wrestling made his uh, appear, made his appearance. Stryker referenced the two were teammates in a former tag team, and then. He was like, hopefully the other part of that team does not show up because that would be really weird. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. Ultimate Lucha one. Well, she has had her moment in Lucha Underground, and hopefully that will be it for Did ever. Joey Wrestling still have a giant fucking head, like, bigger than Byron's? Yeah. A lot of him has caught up with his head at this point, though. He's a much larger man in general these days. <laughs> and he looks kind of old. But uh, that's... But they gave him a name, so I'm wondering if he's going to be around for a little while. That'll hey. be interesting to see what they do with Joey Wrestling from here. I'm glad to see it, because you know what? He's gone through a lot of hard things and turned his life around, and I'd like to see him get a chance like that. I would love yeah. to see them parody Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Gargano's uh, entire last year in NXT, except with Joey Wrestling. Just a total parody. That would be hilarious for me. Sounds good to me. <laughs> was, he the one who got, was he the one who got stabbed after work driving to a trailer park? That was uh, uh, Jamie Noble. Noble. Joey uh, is the one that disappeared for a while, and they were people were concerned. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what happened to him after Eminem. I never really followed him much after that. They you, were uh, the security team. Him and Jamie Noble for Seth Rollins. Oh yeah, J and J security. Yeah. 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 Um, also, in, in that little uh, vignette, we got a lot more Ricky Mandel, Mundo, whatever the hell he's calling himself. Um, and, boy, Slamtown slammed him hard a lot of times in that scene. I almost felt bad for him for a few minutes. Yeah. I don't know if you guys felt the same way, but I actually almost felt bad for Ricky Mundo. I felt bad for him. I, I, I will never feel bad for Ricky Mundo. Uh, I felt bad for Trace the once, though. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Acceptable. Acceptable. Um. Anyway, so uh, th you guys will love that. You'll love this, Casey, since you didn't watch. I, 
uh, you will love the finish of this next match. Uh, Jake Strong, the savage Jake Strong, defeats Drago. I'm sure that makes you happy. Hey, you know what? It's fine because when all all of the Mexican wrestlers don't come back because of shit like this, I'm starting my own promotion, and Drago will win every match that he has. Well, look, I, I even tweeted it out that night. Like, uh, you know, if you've been listening to this show, um, as the guys like to point out, I love to repeat things. Not maybe as much as Conan does on his show, but um, one of the, the the luchadors that I was most excited to see the first season of Lucha Underground was Drago. Yeah, and I still love him coming out every single time. Uh, this was actually the best, probably in ring performance so far that we've seen out of Jake Strong. And this match, uh, Drago did get some offense. It felt like a real match and a real moment. Um, but at the same time, I think the crowd was kind of starting to turn a little bit. I mean, you still saw a lot of people doing the strong thing. We were there, but I don't know about you, Jim, but when I was there, it felt like the crowd wasn't as hot on Jake, especially this particular week, as they had been in the past. What did you think? Uh, I mean, I think it was hard because of where it also took place in the taping. Right. So, for anyone who wasn't there, they basically taped the wedding first. So, I feel uh, and this was the first match after it, so I think it was everyone getting adjusted to the action after they had just seen a wedding. Right. So, and this, like, basically after the wedding, they did a break. So everyone kind of like walked out, got, went to the food truck and stuff. So I think everyone was just getting their bearings. So that, I think that's why by the end of the match, you could see people getting into it more. Unfortunately, right. it didn't help the rest of the, the earlier parts of the match. Well, the good news, the good news is that um, Swagger did not break Drago's leg. Once again, Aerostar came in for the save this time. So the Super Friends... Um, the Super Friends have a program against Jake Strong. I don't know where it's going. Maybe it's going to end up with some kind of two-on-one thing. We'll see. But uh, it looks like the program is not over because he hasn't broken anyone's leg yet. Yeah, you know what's fucking great is when there's a handicap match that gives the good guys the advantage. That's just wonderful looking. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, maybe – Maybe it's leading someplace good. I mean, everyone's mad about, you know, this whole non-luchador Jake Strong thing, but, you know, maybe putting him up against a couple of the, the more popular luchadors in Lucha Underground, maybe at some point they totally squash him. Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe Kevin Cross can squash him. Maybe. That would be great. If we were leading to some kind of face-off with Cross and Strong, that would be exciting. And honestly, yeah. that's what we're missing here. We need to see Strong... Um, really go with somebody a little closer to his size, I think. See, but you got to build to that shit, though. You got that's got to take a while. Like I understand that. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if he's in an extended program with Drago and Aerostar, that's not exactly what's happening right now. So right, I guess we'll, we'll see where it goes. I think the verdict is still out, though. A lot of people have made up their mind that that Jake Strong is a bad idea, um, and I think the ones that haven't already made up their mind are still kind of up in the air on which side they're leaning to. I don't think we'll he's see. a bad idea. I think he should push the shit out because he will. I like Drago. I, mean, I love Drago. Yes. I agree with you. Um, so, and then we get to that, that no moss match. And at first, the idea of this irritated me. Like, I was mad because, you know, it seemed like. Why give Exolicious a, a sexy star moment? And it, it just felt derivative at first. But then you see the actual match. You see what Jack Evans did. Like, first of all, Exo is great. Exo but is great. You can't see greatness unless you have a dance partner like Jack Evans. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Jack uh, had issue with, with putting over Exo and this thing or what the deal was in the back. I don't know any of the backstory, but I can tell you that what it translated to in the ring, amazing. Nothing, nothing short of one of the best matches of the year. Um, you know, there was some interference from Joey Ryan and Eva Lee's a little bit, which you know slowed the pace down. But I thought I it was. Eva Lee ran out. I get why Joey Ryan ran out, but Eva Lee seemed like it was a lazy way to get her out by the ring for the end. Right. Yeah, I mean, that was – if I had any issue with the entire match, that would have been 
it. But I didn't even mind that because I feel like, you know, Joey Ryan is a really popular wrestler. He didn't really have a good angle going at this point in time. Um, and I think this is a good uh, part of the kind of the mid card of Lucha Underground to get him involved with that will give everybody the rub. Um Oh, Jesus Christ. I feel like I saw Captain Howdy from The Exorcist. Jesus Christ. Whoa. <laughs> I'm outside of Urban's place. What are you doing? Yeah, that was, it was weird. The Joey Ryan thing was weird. I'm not really sure what to take about all of this with the three of them. Yeah, I I, I like it. I think it's a good uh, I think it's a good matchup. I I mean my biggest concern would be that it gets too far into a comedy spot kind of world. I yeah. don't want to see it get too comedy spotty, especially with XO. Um, you know, it's a character that some people don't take seriously enough as it is. So you know, I, I hope that that doesn't lead to any overshadowing of what XO is doing. I but know. I love Joey's comedy spots. So what are you going to do? You know, yeah, he's a good wrestler. Too. Joey, you got, I mean, comedy is good. It, you know, you can always, you can be sensitive to the performers and still be funny. There's ways to do it. Well, and let's be honest at this point in time with what, what has happened to Ivelisse, um, not necessarily through any fault of her own to get her character over the right way, maybe injecting some fun back into it is exactly what needs to happen. Yeah, maybe. Maybe she could not get one of my favorite wrestlers to quit the company also, but, you know. <laughs> well. Yay. I, I didn't say it. Hey, I, it's, hey, it's, it's kind of common show. knowledge, you know. It's, it's pretty common knowledge at this point. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of things I still like about Evie, so uh, hopefully – Hopefully this does at least help her character, whether whatever you think about her one way or the other. Hopefully this helps her character and everything. And and XO. Like at this point, I feel like anybody who's attached to XO is is hooked to a rocket going to the moon because that's where XO is headed. Period. No, that's cool. And I, I'm just kidding about the 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 whole Jack Evans thing. Um, but I am still mad about it. Uh hey, you know. I mean, I think any fan of Jack Evans should be. Yeah, I mean, you know a little bit of it's on him, too, though, because it's not just about what happens to you in the world of wrestling. It's about how you deal with it and how you approach things after things happen to you. Right. I mean, I'd love to have Jack on the show and ask him because I think he'd just flat out say whatever was on his mind. Oh, he would. Yeah. I mean, he did on Twitter. Myra, you know? let's get Jack on here he and see what he has to say. Like, I've talked to him about some of these things in person, but I've never we've never had him on the show. And he has a computer now, so he, he might be able to do it. We'll see. <laughs> I don't have headphones. You don't have headphones. What are you doing? I'm going to my... try to get on the Wi-Fi. Oh, you're going to try to log on to the Wi-Fi? Yeah. Wow, you're going to steal Urban's internet? Jesus Christ. Your, uh, your, your reception isn't half bad right now anyway. All right, so... Um, <laughs> uh, Urban's... He's smoking a cigarette, but he has his iPad if you want to invite him, and then he... Oh, you want me to invite to Herb? He just walked out with the iPad and headphones, and now he's smoking a cigarette. I got to send another invite first. Can't wait for all the echoes on that one. <laughs> oh, Sid's coming in. Sid's coming in. That's the other invite. Hashtag King Sid. It was a good episode. I love the stuff that happened. Why are you wearing my shirt? Hey, Tranquilo Cabron. Oh, um, I just got noticed that my my Minoru Suzuki shirt that I ordered from the UK and had way too low shipping costs for it to ever actually get to me. They charged me for it. So maybe around Christmas time, I'll get this shirt. Yes, Rebecca. It does look like Byron is in a car looking to score drugs. Uh, he's <laughs> actually looking Why, for you have some? <laughs> He wants to, Rebecca, Byron wants to know if you're holding. I'm sorry. Urban should walk over to the window right now and ask him if he wants a party. Um, so then there was this other segment, Casey, that I, I didn't even catch all of very well, where uh, Ricky Mundo went through some doors that were locked that he probably shouldn't have and left some of them ajar, which led to um, uh, Matanza being allowed to escape, basically. <laughs> oh, yeah, cool. he just left the door open so Matanza could just... Ruin a wedding. That's interesting. 
Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one way to do it. Yeah. Also, those, the stairs that he took looked very familiar. I remember walking through that area. Yes, in fact, uh, we are some of the few people who have walked through that area. And that that isn't a set. That is straight up like it's natural, good. natural like uh, construction right there. I guess. Yeah, it, I mean that's one of the awesome things about this particular ice house, the the ice temple, is that. Um, when we got to do our little tour through the back, there are all these places that are perfect for TV. I mean, I think it's one of the reasons why they were able to to stay on their new budget and Skip was able to come up with so many great things because that whole place was like a treasure trove of little corners and places to film awesome shit. Some of them were even so awesome that they weren't allowed to film in them because yeah. they were too old uh, to, to really be permitted to film in them. But, uh, but it looked yeah. cool as hell. It really did. It was cool as hell. I just said that. Now I'm repeating you. Okay. Great. Great. Because of the ice, it was cool because as I'm hell. With the ice. Jesus Christ. Like Am I doing second. shows with two Matt Strikers right now? Pretty much. And then, um, let's see. So, uh, wedding. Wedding happens. Uh, Joey, at, uh, wrestling, as you know, came out as one of the... Uh, as the best man, and PJ Black was the man of uh, of second place he was the, honor. The co best man. The co- maybe the bro or the lesser the, le- the lesser best man. Right. He was he was the flower girl. Come on. No, that was that was uh, Mundo. Technically, wasn't it the Mundo doll? Shop. Oh yeah. No, okay. Ricky. Ricky was the uh, ring bear, and I think the doll was the the, the flower, flower bear. I do flower like because he did it. have a basket. The doll had a basket with petals in it. So I weird. just want to point out Joey Wrestling is yet another great name in the line of Jake Strong and Big Bad Steve. I Come on. <laughs> Those names are the best names. Hey. You know they're doing that on purpose, right? Simplicity at its finest. You know, you shouldn't overthink things in the wrestling game, especially, you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> let me see. I will Ooh, say, I- though. Seeing seeing Joey come out was a surprise. Definitely did not expect to see him when he came out during the wedding. I was like, holy shit, that's Joey. Uh, you know, I always get these questions. Van Wagnon's asking me, how does he get in? And I know he's done this before, but, like, I don't know what happens on the other end when I send the invite. So I don't know what to tell him. It, 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 it's like a phone call. It just rings. Click on it. Yeah. Oh, so he needs to open Google Hangouts first? Yes. He just needs to accept a call. See, uh, I but, I get it all the time because Google Hangouts is on my phone, so I know exactly when you're right. sending it. But I don't get – if I'm on my laptop, I don't he see anything. typically from his laptop. Well, right, but if he Gmail doesn't have open. Google Hangouts open. If you have Gmail open, you'll get the video call. You just right, but you need yourself. Gmail or Hangouts open. Yeah. You should always have Gmail open. You never know when you get an urgent email from... Wait, like, it'll ring in Gmail? Up. Yeah. It'll come up as a message in Gmail. Yeah. But it's still making noise and stuff. Okay. This is fascinating. I know. Our, our listeners are like, hey, guys, you, you'd think after three years of doing this podcast, we'd know how to do it by now. But it's weird because <laughs> I host the thing and it's different from my end. I don't know what other people deal with. To, uh, and plus, to... like, honestly, everything up to this point has just been, like, luck that everything's working. Hey, how'd they get cheerleader Melissa to be in the bridal party? Yeah, that's a hot get. How'd they get her? Oh, I, I don't know, but she was stacked. Yeah. But... Last time I saw her, I don't remember her being that stacked. And Holly Meowie was uh, our beautiful Brenda was not doing so bad herself. Those are some nice lime green bridesmaids. Why is beautiful Brenda all of a sudden a best friend? Oh, sorry. Of Taya. When did they ever get along? And all the girls either have to hate each other or be friends. I mean, if if famous B is officiating the wedding, I would assume that uh, beautiful Brenda is a package deal with the bridal party. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they paid good money for for. Also, please keep a mic on Brenda at all times. Oh my God, <laughs> that's Great part pa. of the wedding by a long stretch. Incoming video call from Eric Van Wagner. No, see that doesn't work, Eric. You gotta uh, answer the video call. Incoming calls. 
<laughs> Why is this so complicated? The internet's a scary. <laughs> Um, sorry guys. Talk amongst yourself about. No, awesome they did. They minutes. did technically. They did technically get married, right? Oh, okay. that's, that's not, not gonna, gonna work. work. Oh, if you guys are in the same vehicle, that's definitely not gonna work. Oh god! <laughs> oh god! So much feedback. So much feedback. No, that's fire, not gonna fire work. Fire the audio guy. Fire the audio guy. <laughs> that's just not working at all. That was awesome. That's exactly what it was. How are we going to happen? Or, okay, Urban is in his truck. <laughs> uh, so the cool thing about this wedding to me was that they actually did get married. Whatever hey, that is. You guys, uh, you guys remember how everyone used to shit on carnage culture for recording in a car? No. <laughs> what was that? Amazing. Rest, rest in peace, Carnage Culture. You were, you were too good for the people. Unfamiliar. Oh, Wait. oh man, have we ever had six people in this thing? Yeah. We've definitely had that many before. Yeah, we had like the whole rabbit tribe in here, and you know, they multiply. God bless the rabbit here. tribe. Uh, this is the greatest technical Hi, episode Eric. we've ever done. Hey, Eric's over here on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. How did Wait, that so Eric, you got to answer the thing I'm sending you. If you send me one, then you end up on my phone somehow. Oh, I thought I, I don't know how to answer. <laughs> this is the best thing ever. This show is so complicated. I got a question right for you, Eric. Let's right talk season five. Calling. All right, I'm going to hang up. I'm going to send you the invite. If not, you know what? I'll send it to you in an email, too, and you can just click it, and it should open up the right thing. Let me try that, too. All right. Let's do a Q&A through the phone. This is amazing. So, um, start, start singing Bohemian Rhapsody now. No. Is this the real life? Come on, do it. Is this just fantasy? Fantasy. Landslide. You gotta squeeze a testicle and you can no get that. Escape from oh, reality. damn. I'm just trying, I'm trying to keep an eye on Urban next to Why did they get Remy Malik for the movie? They should have gotten you guys. I know. Shit. And you know, they, I just got. Major success. Yeah. <laughs> I made it. There he is. Wow. Awesome. Look, hey, you, you did. Dude. In two hours less than Marty Elias the first time he was on, so you're still not in the uh, you're still not in the doghouse. I turned fifty three weeks ago. Happy birthday! And, and thank you. And so now I'm technologically completely uh, impotent. Did it just point. all leave you a second you turned fifty? It just left you. I, like I, I never had it. To be, I never had it to begin with. And it just uh, it, it it just gets worse when you turn fifty. It literally this dude sucks. looks way too good for fifty. Are you are you an actual vampire? Is that what happened? There was a time when I just looked good. Now I look good for fifty. It's a bit, <laughs> there's, there's an adjustment there that you have to get used to. Believe me. <laughs> um, Urban's on here too, Eric. Oh, I know you don't get to talk to Urban very much. My man. Oh, how, how are you doing? I li I listened uh, to the heels this week. Oh, did you? I did. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it, there's something very comforting about listening to you guys talk. I don't know what it is. I'm glad well, you, I, you guys are back together. <laughs> yeah, dude. We heard our we heard your, your message for our 100th episode inspired them because you said that we were almost as interesting as the heels. So they were like, oh shit, well, if no one's beaten us yet and we haven't even fucking recorded in a year, <laughs> we might as well do it again. I have a soft spot for the heels. I, I, I love the MMM show, but I have a soft spot for the heels. <laughs> oh no, right. we love we love the heels too. You don't yeah. have to love us. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I will for now. How about that? Yeah, that'll, that'll do. You're the Urban, best. plug your Patreon. Where is everybody? Everybody's in the dark. I, I, I know. Look, 
Casey's got his camera off because it's a million degrees at his house. Byron is in Tennessee with Urban, and I think they're both in the same car. No, they tried to truck. they tried to send us a. They were at J Man's house, but J Man has no fucking internet. So, <laughs> um, wait, Herb, I thought you were in Texas now. I'm back, baby. <laughs> for for good, <laughs> or, or, or maybe you guys already got into this. Uh, no, nobody got into. I'm back. I'm back in Tennessee for good. Oh, Texas didn't work out. I'm uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Things didn't work out with your mom. I heard that whole story. Jeez. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> all right, we won't go dark. We won't. Go dark. <laughs> We're working blue all of a sudden. No. <laughs> oh. Um, we talked about one of your shows this week already, Eric. We talked about Lucha Underground and your ridiculous wedding and what kind of. Uh, who leaves a barn door open with a matanza on the other side? That was just not smart. You guys, we got you guys were there for it. It, it, it was a Jim lot and I were longer in uh, in real time. It was a <laughs> it was like the first. I think it was about over an hour. I think it was cut down to like twelve minutes or something. But yeah, right. It was, well, it, it was, was the shit show that everybody expected. <laughs> I didn't know. It didn't bother me that much live. I don't know how Jim felt about it, but um, oh, I thought I it was great. The thing that bothered me the most about it live was um, you guys brought out all these tacos that didn't have any freaking meat in them, and well, yet they you know, looked really you know delicious, you know, okay, and we were all you know starving. Oh, listen, what's funny is there was um, – the original ah! uh, Kelly, our art person, had, had gone out and had, you know, was going to buy all these tacos, and so she was like, okay, well, do you want – Oh, you know, what do you want? You want meat? You want <laughs> El Pastor? Do you want chicken? Like, what do you want? <laughs> and, you know, we were just like, well, just tacos, you know? I mean, smash tacos. And she said, look, if you have meat out there and you have soft shells and meat, um, it will take hours to get the grease stains uh, out of everything. Like she thought the grease stains would be on the, on the canvas. They would be in the, they would be on the mats. She was like, the grease stains will be, it will take it will take two hours to clean it, and we may not even be able to clean it, and we'll ruin that canvas and you know this whole thing. So the the call was made hard shell with just lettuce and cheese in it because that's the easiest thing to clean up. Well, and it, not, it, not that it we thought good. not that we thought that Matanza would come out and smash people. We didn't expect that. That was completely a surprise. <laughs> that was a surprise for everyone, even Antonio. Um, <laughs> Grandpa. No, but I, I have to tell you, I was uh, I was sitting in the bleachers that day. Uh, there were a lot of Latino fans in the bleachers that day. And when those hard shell meatless tacos heat. came yeah. out, <laughs> uh, we caught a lot of heat. Yeah. The okay. vitriol that was coming from behind where I was sitting was very, very real. I was afraid for my life at one point there. I, I think I, the, as a the native, most hurtful, as a native the, Angelino, it was hard for me to do that as well. I will tell you the most heard thing in the temple that entire day was, those ain't fucking tacos. Hey, watch, <laughs> That's amazing. Watch, watch, but yet Jim was on the other side. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I always saw salivating. The I whole always time. saw cake. I always saw cake. I had no idea there was no meat in those tacos at all. Oh, there was cake on your side because Jim was on the other side of the I ring. I was he directly. Was the, the, not a, not, the cake wasn't just the cake wasn't just on my side. The cake was directly in front of me. Gotcha. Well, so if you look at the scene, like after Taya gets slammed through, there is cake on my shoes, and it was awesome. We everyone what in my group was expecting to take cake. the cake. <laughs> bloody green cake. Well, yeah. If you see at the end of the episode, I'm like, I have this like look like I pooped myself or something after Matanja destroys everyone. And Jim has this look, he's looking down at the ground, like, I was gonna eat that. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Um, yeah, super fun good. episode, and uh, we haven't talked to you in a while, and I do want to talk about your other show, because that's actually why I wanted you to come on tonight, but yeah. um, your boy, your homie that you told me before day one of this season was going to be the shit, Exolicious, is in fact the shit. Exo's been on this show twice, uh, I think, since the last time you were on, and Exo is now the highest rated episode we've ever had. She actually dwarfs really? your, your top episode. She? Uh, he, I he would hope so. Her. I honestly would hope so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think that there was just a lack of information out there about Sonny and, and anything that he's done out there. And uh, kudos to Byron. That was the one good idea Byron's had in the past, I don't know, three years since we started the show was to get XO on. Everyone gets one. 
It sounds <laughs> awesome. And EXO, I think, was found by Matt Stryker. I think that was Stryker's find. And he recommended her. And I, I mean, you know, there's certain people you don't know if they're going to fit in or not at Lucha Underground. There was zero doubt uh, that that uh, EXO would, would fit in perfectly. Just, just the, the second he showed up, I was like, who is that? And how do we give him more time? Because that guy is hilarious. Yeah, so... I mean, the, it was the whole thing was amazing, and I gotta say, I gotta put over Jack Evans in yes. that match too because brilliant booking by uh, by uh, DJ and Roach because it, it, they're the they're the antithesis of each other. Those two, so how how could they not have a long and uh, fruitful program together? <laughs> Amazing. And then now getting Joey Ryan involved at the end, I think we're all interested in seeing where that goes. Um, Cause weird, it's just like weird you, places. Yeah. I mean, it's like you, you take Jack out of the equation all of a sudden, and then you put Joey in the, it's like, what are you guys doing? This is amazing. Uh, yeah. It's, a, it's like a bad uh, letter letters to penthouse forum kind of thing. All right. So here's my, here's my very last Lucha underground question for you. Um, how are you feeling at this point in the season and seeing what's going on and people's reactions about the Jake Strong effect, the Jack Swagger swaggering of Lucha Underground? Because I've seen yeah. very mixed stuff out there, so I'm curious to know how you feel about I mean, I, you know, I, I didn't know much about him because, you know, I, I, of the people that work on the show, I'm probably the least um, experienced wrestling fan. Um I like the guy as a person. I, I know that I know him as a, as a, you know, college wrestler and uh, you know, Perry, Oklahoma and all the lore that, that uh, comes with uh, Perry, Oklahoma and, and uh, um, you, you know, his, he was an all American and all these other great things. And when he showed up, I just wanted to talk to him about that, you know, and that's pretty much all we talked about uh, was uh, you know, wrestling. And he, he also, I think has signed with Bellator. Yes, yes, yeah. which I had just – well, I was surprised when I got there and you guys were like, yeah, look who's here. And I was like, what? I just – he was on Ariel Hawani's show like the week before Lucha started taping talking about Bellator. No yeah. mention of doing – I thought like, shit, he's probably not even going to do much more wrestling if he's yeah, going to go and fight. I think he has a weird sort of love, love, love-hate re- relationship with wrestling at this point, you know, as, as, a, as many people who've been through the whole – uh, you know, wrestling, WWE, and, and indie, you know, world. I, th- I think, uh, you know, it, it's a great, it's a great way to make a good living. And um, you know, the, there's demands for guys who've had uh, the, you know, the exposure that he's had. Um, but, but I think his heart is in the fight game, honestly. Um, and um, uh, you know, it, I hope he does great things. I think he was, it was cool for us. You know, we we went through this. Um, uh, weird thing in this this season, and where we had to, uh, uh, you know, we had to cut some corners cost wise, and one of those was in our pre production window. We had to sort of tighten up our pre production window, and and the net of that was that um, a lot of the visas that we had applied for, um, that usually you would come in around a certain amount of time, but um, thanks to our the current administration, uh, the the State Department is not quite as functional as it once was oh, yeah. and especially from uh uh mexico um visas and things take about twice as long as they did just three four years ago so there was you know unfortunately there was a lot of um people you know we got a lot, i know we've kind of had a lot of uh, uh criticism from the lucha libre purists about you know uh, fewer and fewer people from Mexico in this season. That wasn't by choice. That was by circumstance. You know, we we um, we had a lot of visas came in. You know, three weeks after we finished taping. So um, uh, un- unfortunately, that was a reality of this season. And you know, should we be lucky enough to have another season, I think we will build in uh, the appropriate window for visas in Trump America 2018. Copy that. Well, and 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 we've been saying that on this show too, but it's also great to hear from you that that's kind of what is happening and why. And look, it does have an impact on it. Uh, you know, people are going to say what they want to say about it to a certain extent, but you know what? There's 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 500 children that have been taken away from their parents at the border. I have no right to complain about anything. So I'm not even I'm not I'm not I don't even want to sound like this is a problem you know, in the scheme of, of all the other problems in America right now. So I don't even want to, I don't even want to take that one on, but it's just a reality of what we were dealing with. 
Well, I, I think I think also that I, I feel like what we're seeing at this part of the season, and I've talked to, to other people out there too, that it the show has smoothed out. I feel like it's a lot more even now. And I think the last few episodes have been epic. You know, I think there was, you know, a lot of you guys having to react to not having some of those people and zigging and zagging at the beginning of the season and coming up with new stuff. And but I feel like it's really kind of smoothed out now. And I personally am liking the pacing and the ads of the show. And you guys keep telling us that there was less of a budget. But I'm telling you, these vignettes that we've been seeing, A, I've been seeing more of them than I thought we were going to see. And this yeah. is all stuff that is new to all of us guys, not to you, but new to us. Mm -hmm. um, we've been seeing a ton of them, and they've been really high-quality, great vignettes. And, and, you know, some of that was not because, you know, there was, there was in moving to the Ice Temple, and I know you, I gave you guys a backstage tour, um, you know, the, the, there was that one giant room that had all the sets in it, uh that that made it that made our production days go a lot faster having it laid out the way it was laid out as opposed to anderson street um you know we we had a lot f you know quick we we and the other thing that we didn't do is we didn't shoot any of them till ever after all the matches were done so it was it was like uh we just got in and we were much more efficient so the idea was to keep the quality and put every dollar on the screen as far as you know art direction and cameras and and whatever but but to to save the money in um, you know, the production, the, the, you know, the off screen production of it, you know, we tried to do as much as we could for that, you know, and say, and, 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 you know, hold it to a certain amount of sets and, and have them all right there and just really, you know, work quickly and, you know, Skip, Skip knew we were under the gun and, and, you know, Skip who directs all the uh, vignettes, um, you know, he just took it as a challenge to get through it. And he, I would agree with you. I don't think the quality of the vignettes has dipped at all. Not a bit. Okay, I so that being said, which temple? What's that, Byron? I think they've continued to evolve. Every season, the vignettes have picked up, uh, you know, more personality, more of a of a style, and I think it's been pretty cool. I would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, you know, there every season kind of has its own sort of thing. There was a lot of more, I think, homages in this one that that Skip did. You know, from Indiana Jones to you know Alice in Wonderland to all the kind of weird. Um, bizarre stuff that 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 uh you know happens uh, over the course of, of of this season and you know but it is a shorter season i mean with only 22 episodes um you know it's not like the the season three where we had a nice 40 hour run so if you had to choose between the two temples to go back to knowing what you know now including making vignettes which one would you pick uh you know i i'm gonna go with uh lucha classic i think or temple classic uh there was something about that anderson street that i just dug and and, and uh the vibe there was it was a little different um i i could do without the heat you know if we had to do yeah. it in the in the winter i think i'd take the anderson street um uh the the ice temple leaked horribly <laughs> horribly yes it did. and we had some rainy days there and it was just it was like in the uh, cast area, if you went down, you do, you know, we roped off the bottom floor of that because it was on two feet of water. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that space was, um, that space was, was more authentically uh, condemned, I would say, or condemnable. Uh, it, it, it was really like, in fact, I think they're tearing it down now. I don't think we can do another one at the Ice Temple, but um, uh, it was, um it, it was fun. It was, it, it, there was things about it. I really loved. Uh, but, but I think, I, I think um, I, I like the classic building. I think, I think uh, that had um, some more sort of just maybe, maybe I'm just being nostalgic, but I think I like the old building better. Hey yeah. Casey, I wonder which one, um, I wonder which one Antonio would pick. You know which one to Antonio would pick Casey? <laughs> just, uh, I want to pick the one that does not leak all over my dick and balls while I sleep in my office. <laughs> I can't tell if that's Antonio or like uh, Ren uh, from Ren and Snoopy. <laughs> it sounded more like Triumph, the insult comic dog. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Hey, I'm a big fan of Triumph, too. Say for me to poop on. <laughs> for me to poop on. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Now, I have a whole bunch of boxing fans that are going to be really angry at me, uh, including myself. If I don't talk about uh, tonight's episode of The Contender, Jim and I were both there. 
Um, if you didn't watch last week, if you haven't watched this week, screw you. You're missing probably the best boxing on television right now. Um, it is a wonderful show. I'm not just saying that because Eric is here. I'm actually genuinely impressed and surprised by the quality level of it all around. The first week, um, I was also at that fight. I'm not going to say that that was a great fight. Tonight was a great fight. Yeah. The first week was an interesting fight. It was fun to watch. It was a great show. And the quality of the show knocked me off my socks. I was not expecting that. I thought it was better than the, the HBO 24 sevens. Wow. How the hell did you get to that quality level for this show? Uh, boy, I tell you, you know, one of the things that was um, really cool about that show is, is that for, for many of us, um, that was like one of our first, um, you know, we, we did the first one and we shot it in 2004. And there were so many people uh, who've worked on the original series that have gone on to do amazing things and, you know, bigger and better and, and you know, moved, moved off of that to run shows and, and, and be part of big shows and things like that. And there were so many of them who called me up and said, hey, uh, I, I know I hear you're doing this again. Um, I always that was always my favorite show I ever did. I'd love to do it again. And and I would say, you know, well, I can't afford you. Uh, you're 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 far too uh, expensive for me now. And they would say, I don't care. Just give me what you got and I'll do it. And so the talent level was more than we should have been able to afford uh, top to bottom. Um, we brought in a new director um, who didn't know anything about uh, a boxing and was not a sports guy at all. He's sort of a film guy. Is it? Um, uh, his name is uh, Rami Ramini, who's uh, this Egyptian guy who's like, you know, really this sort of camera nerd, I would call him. He was a DP and now a director. And uh, we shot it all with C300s and um, multi. We did the high speed stuff on um, the Amiras. And that's typically not how you shoot action stuff. Um, but but um, uh, we kind of took a chance on it and hoped that it would look good. Uh, and you know, the texture of it and the colors and, and what you can do with low lighting, you know, I go, we go back to like season one, you know, we, we didn't even shoot. That was in standard def. You right. Know? I mean, it was all four by three, you know, standard yeah, we def. On, I'm trying to remember the camera. I think they were like beta SPs, you know, like, or, or digi beta cameras. Digi -betas. <laughs> oh. They were like standard def digi beta cameras. And, um, you know, so, so to be able to go in there with, you know, like the, the, the C300s or the Amiras and, you know, these other things and, and, and to really just, um, you know, go in and really play with the color and uh, the textures. And, um, you know, we had a brilliant art design. Um, That's uh, a big part of it, too, because the, the upstairs gym and even the lighting in the, the actual gym and the, and the design, like, I'm pretty sure Ultimate Fighter's shooting on 300s now, too, but it, it doesn't look like what you guys did. Yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, a lot of that, um, you know, it was the space. You know, the, that was one of those spaces where I looked at 20, 30 different warehouses in downtown LA, and it was literally one of those ones where, you know, God bless Joe Burke. He's my um, uh, location manager that find, find, found the original Lucha Temple. He found the Ice House. Um, he called me and said, I think I got what you want after like 20 places that I hated. And, you know, it was literally the same kind of thing. You walk in and go, okay, yeah, this is it. And then, um, you know, the art designer brought this guy named Stuart Frisell in who, you know, was one of the original art designers on Survivor. You know, he's, he's done all these great shows and movies and all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, he just got into it. And, and um, you know, title came in in a big way, um, you know, and gave us so much great free stuff that we were able to spend money on, on the sets and on the lighting. And, and, you know, just it's one of those things where we it feels like we were starting from scratch, but we weren't. You know, it was one of those shows that you know, we'd all worked on and, and we sort of, <laughs> I always equate it to like, it, it was sort of like that great girlfriend that got away, you know, you're like, God, if I could just get back with her one more time, we could really make it work. You know, <laughs> and, uh, uh, she sort of, it was sort of the one that got away that you couldn't understand why the show wasn't still on and you just loved it. And um, sort of bring back all the people, you know, so many people who had worked on it the first time and then they inject it with new creative energy, like with Rami and some of the cameramen and, and um you know some of the other people it just it just I, I just you know when i would look at what they were shooting i was like this is this has got to work you know i mean right. we we're getting great material 
and then really it became about the editing. I mean, I think if you look at the show, this is a real, you know, this is an editor show. If you look at just what happens in the locker rooms and in the hallway walk and, and you know, coming into the, to, to the, the ring and, and the montages, I mean, it's really hard to weave a story out of, you know, 15 cameramen just roving around a gym. You know, that's a really tough challenge. And, um, you know, between the editors that I brought into this, you know, little premium cable show, you know, I got, a, I got guys that are showrunners on, on like, like this one guy, Sean Foley, who was an original editor on it. He's a showrunner on uh, Undercover Boss. He came in to edit because he just loved the show and wanted to edit again. I've got the supervising editor on The Voice who came back to work on a Hudson Smith. I got, you know, all these great, talented guys that, um, you know, they didn't ask, like, how much am I going to get paid? They were just like, what what day do I show up? You know, I mean, all I had to say was contender, boxing, we're going we're gonna to do this again. And, and it was just like, it was such a cool experience. Um, you know, to work with these guys again. And a lot of them, you know, we've all kind of gone our separate ways, but um, it, it was just very much like a reunion of some very talented people. And I think that, you know, if you liked show two, wait till you see show six. It's it's just like the show just really takes off. Um, and, you know, I, I don't worry. I, I want people to watch it. I want people to like it, but I know it's good. So I, I feel like it, it it will find find an audience. Well, I mean, and that's kind of, uh, look, it, First of all, if you've got something better than episode two, I mean, I was at this fight live and I have to say the way it was cut together and the whole episode and the packages and learning the guy's stories. And of course, my boy, Michael Moore from Cleveland. Talk He's great. Me. I'll get him. You know what? Oh I'm going to get Michael in here to talk to you and you, you'll, you'll go for four hours because that dude can talk. I love that dude. Then the 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 night I talked to him at the contender, he talked my ear off and he had some place to be. <laughs> he was great. Love, love that dude. Michael absolutely get him on here for me i'd love to have him on um he was kind of a last minute ad on our cast really because he was wow um, he was scheduled to have a fight on espn like two weeks before we started and uh um we didn't think he'd be ready to go and we didn't you know we didn't want to and then he that fight fell apart it was with a guy named uh, mark deluca who we were supposed to have on the show as well and then um uh he, he uh mike had to pull out of it and w when he pulled out of it i was like well, let's look at that guy again and i watched tape of him and and um and when we brought him in i i fell in love with him i just thought it was so funny i mean everything he says is just hilarious hey don't and sleep on cleveland man <laughs> don't sleep tough on town. It yeah tough it town. is these days <laughs> it's tougher than when yeah. i was there if I mean, Michael you also Moore, if Michael Moore lives there. It's a tough town. Well, I mean, I was also surprised. Um, look, a couple of guys you got on the episode fighting Eric Walker, um, yeah. great, talented kid who who's coming out of prison system, and and he has a he yeah, was I mean, a surprise. He was like one of those. Uh, we just found like a pearl with that guy because uh, you know he, he, his story was so heartbreaking and sad. And um, if there's ever a contestant who is perfect for the contender, it's Eric Walker. I mean, I just think, you know, the guy, he, he, he mean, he, he's sort of like every bad childhood uh, trauma that you can experience, he experienced. And, and it, of course, it messed him up. And, and he was, you know, you know, he, he lost his father and he had so there was addiction in his family and, and he lost his sister. And he, I mean, just a lot of bad things happened to him at a young age. And, you know, he turned to the streets and down in Louisiana, you don't get three strikes. You don't get a whole lot of chances for anything. And uh, he was sentenced the day after his 16th birthday. He was sentenced to 16 years in an adult prison. Yeah. When I heard that story on the show about the judge saying, you know, you spent 16 years of doing bad. And now you can have another 16 years to think about it. I was just like, holy shit. Yeah, that is some much. At 16 and, years old, though. Yeah. And he went to an adult prison in Louisiana. Yeah, he's an adult man. prisons are not nice, nice places. And uh, for most people, it would ruin their lives, you know, and um, but not for Eric. You know, he found boxing and uh, he's just a genuinely good person. And if there's ever anybody uh, who did, who has earned a second chance, uh, it, it's Eric for sure. And, um, I, you know, I don't take sides, but man, I was really cheering for that guy. Um, and John Jackson, who was a contender basically before coming on the contender, I was very surprised to see him there at all. He was, uh, yeah, I mean, he was, you know, he was an Olympian. Um, he fought in the Olympics. He was 
a lot of people say he was beating Charlo until he, you know, he, he bobbed when he should have weaved yes. and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, suffered a bad knockout. But a lot of people were, uh, most people were saying he was winning that fight. And, uh, you know, his father is Julian Jackson, who, you know, is like a Hall of Famer, had something like 45 knockouts. The dude had knockout power in both hands. And um, when Eric picked him, I was kind of like, oh. you know, you sit there as a producer and you, you don't have any say in it. You're like, okay, I'm either going to lose this awesome redemption prison story or I'm going to lose this awesome son of a legend story. But either way, one of them is going out and show two and you just like, ah, shit, what do you do? You know? Yeah, I know. When I saw you before, when I think Jim and I saw you right before this, and you were like, these are two of my best guys and they're already fighting each other. We were like, what the shit? This is like the semifinals on day yeah, two always here. Happens, though. It always happens. And, and, you know, Eric was smart. Eric, you know, like, and he, and he says this, it's like, the guy was made for the show because he's like 16 years in prison. And after about two weeks on a reality TV set, guys are kind of, you know, starting to break. They're starting to act weird and they're starting to do weird stuff and acting out and, and not getting along. But Eric's like, man, I spent 16 years cramped up with a lot more people like this. And I didn't have a chef and I didn't have a comfortable bed and I didn't have, you know, a private shower and I didn't have whatever. But what he's really been good at is he reads people and he would, you know, in the gym, he would just sort of like look around and he identified, I mean, you know, because I talked to him about it. He said, he said, John Jackson showed up and he wasn't in the best shape. And so I thought, well, I can either fight him right now or I'm going to end up having to fight him three weeks from now or four weeks from now when he's in shape. So I'm going to jump on him now and get him out of here. And that was right. And he's taken out a name. I mean, yeah. Jackson had a name coming into this thing. Him and Mosley Jr. had names coming into this thing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. He probably, and, and, um, and John, uh, John Thompson to a certain degree had a name too. I mean, he won the boxing tournament and he looked, he didn't look great in the fight, but, but, but he, had, you know, he's a legit dude. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so he, he jumped all over him and, and it was like, well, this is, you know, this is kind of why they, we, we do this. And this always happens. It, it happened in every season. Somebody, somebody stepped up and said, I, you know, I got one chance to make a name for myself. I'm ready. I don't think he is. We're going to do this in five rounds, man. There's, you, you know, there's a mentality there. You got, you, you got to be, you know, uh, you got to be ready to just go once they say go. And, and, and Eric was, and, you know, he won that fight fairly easily. Jim, what did you think of the fight? I mean, you were, you were there with me. I, I think we were standing up for all of it after the first round, right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, the one thing I I pretty much remember most of the time was the fact that Brandon was like directly in front of us. So it was like a lot of like moving like this ourselves so we could get in some uh, some good shots of uh, actually seeing the fight. But yeah, it was a, I thought it was a great fight. Brandon Adams or Brandon the cameraman? Cameraman. cameraman. Oh, okay, yeah. There was a little there's a little lucha contender crossover. Brandon was one of the guys. Right, and we sat in his section, not real realizing he was going to be on a pedestal with his ass in our face. A lot of it. Well, but how many? I mean, you recognize him right away, not from his face, but from his ass. I'm guessing. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, we, we uh, well. See, I sit in the bleachers more than Jim, so I definitely recognize Brandon's ass probably more than Jim did. Jim, Jim wasn't accustomed to having Brandon all up in his shit. But Brandon, I got to get him on the show soon too, because uh, there's an episode of Lucha Underground coming up soon where he takes a bump. I don't know if any of that makes air, but. Brandon oh god amazing. i hope so i hope it makes it because he the, the best thing about Brandon though is he's such a wrestling fan like yeah. such a wrestling fan yeah. it's ri ridiculous how big of a wrestling fan he is yeah, yeah we've well, talked actually, to him about uh, a ton yeah because he i met up with him and j-man at the new japan show earlier this year I was, uh, we were just hanging out in the parking lot yeah I was there yeah he, he did um yeah byron we know you were there but it was more about j-man and brandon yeah, of course. He he did tough enough with me. He did the uh, Legends House. He, all I have to do is say Brandon is wrestling, and he shows up, and he, he drives down from Utah and he puts himself up. He works as a local, and uh, uh, but if it, if there's anything wrestling, like Brandon's our guy, you know. Uh, uh, so he loves so, it. So the the fight itself, um, your boy Sergio Mora, the Latin Snake, said the most poignant comment to Andre Ward as they're sitting there. Um, and you guys cut it into the show uh, that Jackson is going to regret for his entire life the two hundred fifty thousand dollar mistake of not throwing that jab, and right. it is so true about this fight. What you're watching when you see this fight is the guy 
who could be out there, um, you know, pivoting and putting his jab out there, doing it B hop style and just doesn't. And the corner is telling him to, and he's got some moments. And every time those moments start to come through, it gets really exciting. You're like, Oh shit, it's the tide's going to turn. And then yet, no. And Walker just shuts him down the whole time, works the inside, puts the movement on him. And uh, like you could see it, you could see it on Sergio's face where he's just like, "Why? how is this happening? How is he falling apart like this? It, um, you know, it's a, a puncher's chance is not always a blessing. You know, it's like when you start relying on that big right, um, as to every time the every time a round ticks by, you, you feel the pressure to throw it more and more. And, and you know, look, after about round one, after the first round, I didn't think there was any chance Eric was losing that fight. He just he just had it in his head. You just saw it. I mean, you just saw he was smaller than 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 John or than John. He was, um, uh, uh, you know, he was less experienced. But you just saw like every time he got hit by one, he threw three. You know, and it was just you just sometimes you can you, you just there's you just read the fight. You know, and, and look, you know. I've watched a lot of fights up close and just the way they carried themselves. I, I knew Eric was winning halfway through round one. I knew, I knew he was going to win that. I, I felt like John Jackson wanted to win like his dad. Like he wanted to go down slugging and do something like his dad would do. But I've always thought that he was more of a technical boxer, that he was a rangier yeah. guy and that that was where he should be. He should be pivoting off the left and sticking, sticking his hand out there. I do think he didn't I, – I, I think he might not have been in the shape he wanted to be in because I don't know if you guys noticed it, but it's like when he, when he came out, like he didn't have that chiseled look that he has had in other fights. And I thought, well, maybe he just – you know, these guys, it's funny, you know, no matter what, how much you tell them, like, okay, you're going to show up April 13th, be in shape, be ready to go, the first fight's April 23rd. No matter how much you tell them that – they don't believe, you know, they don't believe that they're actually going to make the show or, or they don't, you know, they, you know, they just don't quite put it together. Eric did when Eric showed up and when he sparred, in fact, he sparred Sergio. I had him spar Sergio um, when we were doing casting because he, he showed up and I was looking at him. I was watching him hit the bag and I was like, I was like, nobody knew anything about him because he, you know, most of his fights were down in Louisiana and he had a good record and he looked great. And, you know, he was even Freddie, like when he was hitting the bag, Freddie Roche turns around and he's like, who, who is that? You know, like he'd never even heard this guy. He goes, and he told me later, he goes, I heard him hitting the bag over there and it sounded like Manny Pacquiao, you know, which is a pretty high praise. And, and so I said, okay, Sergio, I had like, Sergio had just fought. So Sergio was in shape. And I said, you know, I was asking Sergio if he would give me a couple of rounds just to give an evaluation. So I put him in with Eric. And um, um, <laughs> Eric kind of put it on him a little bit. <laughs> it was like, here's a former WBC champion, uh, you know, who was in shape and, and showed up. And, and I wouldn't, you know, it was a competitive round. Eric was way more active than Sergio. And granted, Sergio is a little older than Eric. But Sergio walked out of the ring and he turns to me and he goes, he's in. He goes, no. <laughs> No it's that he easy goes, sometimes. He goes, he goes, that guy's in. And he didn't even, I, I didn't even have to ask him. He just goes, yeah, that guy's in. Okay, well, you guys kind of ran that back on the episode, which surprised the shit out of me because this is the second week in a row we've seen Andre Ward lace him up and actually get the ring with these guys. And he went with Eric. And uh, I saw him tucking back the shoulder a little bit there and kind of moving back off of him like, whoa, what, <laughs> what is going on here? Yeah, Eric went at him. I mean, it was it was, it, and that's how it looks. I mean, that's that's what we all watched. And, and you know, when it comes to Andre and sparring, it's not the kind of thing you produce. You know, it's sort of like, um, you know, you're Andre Ward, and I would tell him, I said, Andre, you know, and I, on set he has a green room with a shower, and he's, you know, just so happens we throw all the stuff he might need in there just in case he gets an inkling. But it's never like you know, you don't tell it. You know, it, it's hard when you're someone like him. Uh, and you go to a boxing gym, everybody wants rounds with you. Everybody wants to get in. And it's dangerous because everybody, you know, you, you're you're the undefeated world champion. Nobody's going to come in there just for a little bit of work. You know, they're right. they're all gunning for you. So it's not the kind of thing you ask people to do necessarily. Um, but Andre was awesome. He, I mean, he just was like, he, he would get in there. He would smell the gym. He would hear the noise. He would hear the bell. And you just saw it. You know, it was like this. 
little half smile he would get and all of a sudden Carlos is taping up his hands and and uh, you know off we go and I'm yelling at the director to get more cameras in here to shoot this I and mean I'm telling you it makes it makes both of those two episodes I don't know how much more of that those kind of moments that you got but um, Andre is killing it you know being the the face of this show right now and those moments and him getting in the ring um, the way that he talks to these fighters too is different than you've seen a lot of these shows that have been been hosted before and it's different than what you get on ultimate fighter with the coaches and dana yeah. oh it, um, i i tell you it, like it evolves because at first you know he's like you know pump the jab do this whatever and then he starts to, like it sort of turns a corner once he sort of knows these guys sort you know fairly well and they're you know in the recuperative phase and they're not sparring quite as much as they were as they do in the early you know first half of the season and then his his advice and his counsel just like he like you know the guy has five kids and there was like one time where he sat down with a guy who was acting like an asshole and he sat the guy down and he just lectured him and, and he and he you know he talked to him about life and he talked to him about you know he talked to him like a father and it was the most inspiring father son speech I heard and I just said to him I go I know you just had your fifth kid but man you need to have five more because 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 like I've never seen a better like father role model speech than what he'd just given this guy and I didn't know that about him I always thought he was kind of this closed off a little bit standoffish maybe a little aloof um but that was all just part of you know when you're an undefeated guy and everybody's trying to get you know and you you know he was just a very private guy um, but, but man, I really grew to, to respect the guy and really like him. Just, just the way he, uh, he handles himself and the way he handles other people. And he's so respectful and he cuts through the bullshit, man. He just like, he knows everything that these guys are trying to, every game these guys are trying to run and he just cuts right to them. And he says, no, th this is, I, I see what you're doing and, and stop. And, and he'll explain it to him. And, and, uh, it, it was it was awesome working with him. Like I can't, I, like I, I would always been a fan since he won that super eight um, uh, tournament on Showtime. I'd always been a fan cause I loved how he, how he won those, those fights. Um, but man, as a person, I'm just a fan of him now. I just think he's a great host. Well, and I think, I think that honestly, this is going to cement his legacy past what he would have gotten had he not done this. I think this is going to actually put him in a different category in people's minds of, of how he is remembered and looked at as a fighter. And I'm not, I'm not 100% convinced he's retired forever. I'm not either. I'm not either. And again, but I think this is going to help, you know, yeah. these guys have, have shifts in their career for, for Floyd Mayweather. It was the switch to being money Mayweather that yeah. did it for him. That, that solidified him in people's mind and put him in the lexicon in a different place. And I honestly think that this is going to be part of that for Andre Ward. It's going to put him in a different category where people just look at him and remember him fondly and, and differently than they would have if he hadn't done it. It, it. it is exactly how I feel about it you know, now. And I'm hoping that when people have watched the full season that they'll feel that way too. He's just a really good guy. I mean, and I don't, I, I, I don't, say that about everybody and especially everybody in the combat sports world but man i can say that about him i don't think there's anybody if there's a if there's a more decent person in the boxing world i would like to meet him <laughs> all right so who's a bigger pain in the ass to deal with wrestlers or boxers uh you really want to know yeah oh, well, wrestlers I... by far no you're oh, kidding yeah. me yeah no because uh, boxers are solitary like boxers are are, are anti-social mostly you know, they, they spend 10 weeks preparing for 45 minutes. You know, uh, uh, wrestlers, um, you know, they're just so different. They're just so out there. And they, um, you know, they, they, they do this. You know, I always sort of joke with some wrestlers, like, if I gave you, what would you rather have, a million dollars or a million Twitter followers? And I think half of them would take the million Twitter followers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and there's this sort of like, wrestlers have this common sort of like a uh, uh, need for adoration and need for praise and need for that, that, that drives you a little bit crazy after a while. Not all of them are like it, you know, honestly, there, but, but there are some that you're just like, you're like, like they're always on, you know, they, they never, they can never just be just in the background, you know, they can never just be a role player. You know, they got all, they, they, they're constantly all going into business for themselves. And, you know, you're fighting, they're fighting for time. And I mean, you guys know, all. I mean, I love them because of it, but that's definitely like this slight dysfunction in their brain uh, that makes them sometimes hard to deal with.
But at the same time, it's like, you know what? If they weren't like that, they probably would be those nice guys that don't get anywhere in the business. You know, <laughs> they you, they almost have to be that annoying and obnoxious to compete it, in that world. It's, it's true. I mean, it, and it, it's true. And, uh, you know, wrestlers are born. I don't think they're made. You know, I think they're just you know, they, uh-huh. they, they, like, you know, they, they don't stumble into wrestling. They're in wrestling for a reason. And there's definitely a personality type that gets into the business. And, and I love them. Like, I don't mean to sound like I'm uh, I'm shit talking wrestlers because I'm, I'm definitely not trying to do that. But but they are a higher maintenance individual than your average boxer. Um, all right. So I want to ask you another question. Epics. Yeah. Um, the shows on Epic have some friends that have gotten it specifically for the show. I have some friends that are mad because they're missing it because it's on Epics. I know. Um, obviously, we, but, but, but look, this is business. Yeah. Epics is putting on a good show that people are going to say is a good show because they know that you don't have their service yet and they want you to buy their service. I mean, that is one of the, the, the things behind the show, right? They got this and Get Shorty. They're putting a lot of time, money behind it. Yes. There are within. Seven Dude. blocks of my house, 12 billboards, billboards 12 <laughs> billboards for this show. And I wish that they were more active socially. That's the one thing I wish they were spending more on because boxing fans, you know, turn to social media, I think, more than they turn to their neighborhood billboards. Um, um, but, but you know, there are people that remember the, uh, the old NBC version, and I think they're trying to, like, uh, cash in on some of that old contender nostalgia from people who liked it the first time. Um, but boxing fans... You know, I think that's going to I think that's the real challenge is to win over the boxing fans. I think I think if you can win over the boxing fans, um, you know, TV fans will will find it eventually. Uh, I think you can get you can get it on Sling TV. Yeah, that's and, how I'm getting it. I just uh, for five. It was like five bucks more. I just added it to my Sling package, which is great yeah. because I can't watch Lucha Underground on there still. Weird, right? I don't get it. I don't understand what's Freaking going on. Amazing. And both companies are like, yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And, and, and Epic, Epics you can get, I think, through an app as well. I think the, the, the hardest is if you have DirecTV, it's kind of tricky. Um, but I think you can go on the Epics website and get a free trial, like a free two-week trial, and you can download, you can watch episodes there. So. Yeah, which would be uh, my recommendation at this point, too, because th- mm-hmm. this episode tonight is definitely one where worth catching if you i'm telling it. you they, they it just takes off the show the show takes off i think of the middle shows like five six seven eight nine like man i can't wait for you to see those they're so good they're i'm excited so- man yeah i'm excited it's what i'm doing with my friday nights uh so it airtime is it's on epics it's friday night 9 p.m right yes pacific, or 9 p.m eastern time which yeah, is 6 p.m pacific yeah and then it re- re-airs i mean i think there's four epics networks and if you can't catch it when it airs it re-airs a lot. It'll be on a, a lot. Yeah. And I think even yeah. on my sling, it has it on demand like two days later or something after it they do the first. The, yeah, and you can find it on demand as, as well. That's another one. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's a great show. We're proud of you. You haven't fucked up. You've done something right. You're not living in Matt Van Wagner's shadow anymore. <laughs> How can you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. You know, actually, I take it back. That last season of Survivor was really, really good, Eric. It was no, really I mean, good. Uh, I, I did see that. My kids are big Survivor nerds. They love it. And, of course, this season, it's all about... Mundo, man. The Mundo. It's all Johnny about... Johnny Survivor. Johnny Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> are they gonna cap like if if the show starts and it doesn't say johnny survivor as his name like i hope everyone on no, that cast calls I, him johnny I, I may i may i made as a condition i made him say he was johnny mundo uh and and uh because i gotta get the i gotta get there it can't be johnny impact or anything like that He's, we're giving the rub to lucha underground okay right, like, come on bro you, you've got one contract that really matters damn it <laughs> i told i told matt i said look i go i promise you he goes I said, I don't know what he's going to be like when he plays the game, but when, when you get into the edit and you start looking at his interviews, you're going to love him. And, and he called me the other day and he confirmed that. He's like, that dude is funny. He's like, he's got funny interviews. So uh, All right, here's Johnny Mundo. Uh, here's my last question that I got DM'd from a certain someone who wants to remain anonymous, even though you know exactly who they are. Um, they are asking me why I haven't asked you about the Pentagon situation and if there was really an offer for Pentagon from WWE and if you feel like you're going to lose him. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I haven't, uh, I haven't spoken with Jonathan in, in months and, um, uh, you know, I think, um, I, I, you know, 
if it would be a, it's a weird one, you know, because like he'd kind of patched things up with Dorian and I thought they'd kind of worked that out. You know, we finished shooting in February. So like, I haven't spoken with him since then. He's not come to, he's usually very forthcoming when, when things like this come, like I, we hear from him when stuff like that happens. I don't know if it's happened or not. I am, it, maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but I'm not aware of it happening. Um, I mean, but, well, he just yeah. did triple A for Dorian last week. He did. Exactly. He did triple A. Exactly. And, I, you know, I, I don't think he's a family man. You know, he lives in, he lives, you know, he's got kids and I don't think he wants to be on the road with WWE. And I don't know that they, um, I don't know that he would fit in there to be totally honest. You know, I mean, you know, size wise, he would be on the small side there. And, you know, as much as we all love his Spanish promos, uh, I'm not sure USA Network would want a Spanish promo. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, I, he's a better fit for us. What can I say? He's a better fit for us. Um, he's a super talented guy. I, honestly, True. Ricochet, however, was also a better fit for you guys, in my opinion. Yeah. You know what? And they're, he's doing okay there, it seems like. like he's doing all right. Uh, he's doing all right. Uh, like, uh, and, and my thing is, is like, I, let these guys make as much money as they can. You know, I'm all for these talent making as much money as they possibly can. Their window of time as a professional wrestler where you can make money is very short. It's not like what you and I do. You know, you have a 30, I'm 30 years into my career. It's like wrestlers don't have that. They've got 10 years if they're lucky. And, and uh, you know, I'm never going to fault anybody who comes to me and says, hey, I'm, I, you know, I'm being offered this. And, uh, you know, look, I, this is a, this is a amount of money that will help my family. I'm never going to say no. You know, if he came to me and said and asked, I would, you know, we would talk about it. I don't, you know, I don't know that the partners and whatever, it's not entirely, it's, it's rarely, is it my call? <laughs> well, um, yes, you do have a few other uh, chefs in yeah, the kitchen. <laughs> but, but I can recommend, you know, and I have in the past when, and I, and I can sort of, you know, sort of grease the wheels, you know, if, if that's what it took. Um, I would hate to lose the guy. Don't get me wrong. I would hate to lose him, you know, and Manny. I would hate to lose. They're both awesome, and I and I and I, and I'm friends with them, and I like them. And uh, um, but but you know, you know how it is in the freelance world. You know, sometimes you gotta you gotta look out for number numero uno, as they say. And if yeah, when somebody's like, oh, waving yeah. a signed check in front of you, things change really fast <laughs> in the freelance. And, and I and I don't diminish that, but it, part of me doesn't quite get you know, uh, apart from, you know, just having him and, 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 and keeping him, uh, part of me doesn't understand that, that they would understand how to use someone like that. You know, I, I don't know that that fits the, the mold of what they do, you know, like, you know, we, we've got Skip Chase and making him look cool. You know, who, do, who do they have that's going to do that? Well, and I feel that way about his presentation in general. You know, I, I've, I've talked to a couple of impact fans and the impact fans have kind of welcomed him in and been very excited about him. Uh, but they, they get a little irritated when I say that I still believe um, that no matter what, and I've been liking Impact a whole lot more myself, that the the premium version of the Pentagon character is still Lucha Underground. And it's not even AAA. It's like, where do you get the backstory of a skeleton yeah. ninja? Where do you get him and Vampiro doing all their crazy craziness? It's, it's like, yes, he's had great matches with Justin, Sammy Callahan. Word. We have a word for the craziness, and you didn't say it on purpose. What do we call the Vampiro Pentagon segments? Oh, the fuck dungeon segments. Yes. Oh, I, was, I, was, I was just about to say, do you think WWE would put him in a sex swing with Vampiro hitting him with a baseball bat? I don't think so. <laughs> Never. <laughs> yeah. That'd be an Never, and it's just like, and, and, and for the Impact fans that have him over there, and it's like, yeah, but over there, he's just Phoenix's brother, and he's this awesome luchador. In yeah. Lucha Underground, he's like some otherworldly vampire loving militant to himself. Yeah. You know, and remember those those packages that we did on him that you know we introduced him and we had all those, you know, cool things of him breaking ninja's arms and doing weird stuff and you know, yeah. like all the dead bodies in the shape of a pentagon. That was amazing. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's and that's that's really my point. Is that it's that you know you you can't be going through you know bo you know Boise, Idaho, and and having Pentagon do cool stuff you know in, in an arena there. You know, I mean, it's sort of like you know six nights a week. You know, I think I think Pentagon works um, when when you can add a layer to him 
you know, uh, through directing and editing. Um, I have one last question that I just got sent, and then I'm going to leave you alone. Um, I happen to know the answer to this question, but I have not answered it on this show. But uh, what's up with Dante Fox? Everyone wants to know where Dante Fox is this season, Eric. He, he was nursing. He was nursing. Uh, uh, he he had sort of a, a, a injury that he had to nurse, and we couldn't put him in a match, and so it, it kind of snuck up on us, and we we weren't aware of it. Um, but he does come back by the end of the season. Don't worry. There you go. Now you got it. You got it from the boss man himself. Don't worry. There, there, <laughs> there, was, a, there was a medical situation that that was keeping him from being able to compete, and uh, it got better. And he went to, towards the end of the season. He was fine. Yeah, I think I did mention that that he was there the first weekend, but just not cleared. Yeah. Um, to go that weekend because a lot of people thought that something happened backstage it, it, or there was no, some no, no, or nothing, something. No, nothing like that. We're very strict with. Um, medical stuff and you know before every season uh, you know everyone gets the full you know evaluations and, and baselines and, and MRIs and everything and and you know when you when you shoot when you're shooting you know however many we six in a weekend if you miss if you miss if you're out for 10 days and those 10 days follow uh, you know back-to-back -back weekends you know Friday Saturday Sunday and then the following Friday Saturday Sunday, that that's 12 episodes you've missed, you know? Yeah. And, and so, you know, that, that was always kind of the downside of that schedule and the way we were shooting is like one sprained ankle and you miss half the season, you know? So yeah, was, the schedule for Lucha Underground is, is definitely my least favorite thing agreed. about Lucha Underground. The damn agreed. schedule is when I cross wrestled first on impact instead of Lucha Underground. He was signed to you guys for two years and I he still know. debuted on impact first. I know. How did that happen? <laughs> you tell me. I, I, God, that whole, and it's fine. Look, I, you know, it is fine. I mean, and he's getting over everywhere Kevin, instead, which is great. But Kevin's credit, boy, he was a gentleman about it. And he, you know, he waited and waited and waited and, and, uh, you know, was loyal and, you know, wanted, he wanted to be on our show before, above all else. And, and, uh, you know, he, as things came up, you know, we kind of had him on ice as we were trying to, pick the right place to bring him in and you know other things would come up and you know like he was always loyal so you know i, I i'm glad we got him better late than never yeah and i like i kind of like where he where he ends up uh fitting in with you guys and that promo that everyone's seen now um was the talk of of wrestling for a while there and, so and he was a surprise in how good of an actor he was uh, i think every like i remember skip i talked to skip after um kevin shot that scene and he was like, wow, Kevin is a really good actor. He was really impressed. Like, he doesn't, Skip doesn't say that about everybody, but he made a point to tell me that he thought that Kevin was um, a really strong in the vignettes. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. He's not even that far into his wrestling career. Like, his wrestling, I think, is still going to get a world better. But his promo skills, he's yeah. up there in the top 10% of everyone in the entire game, I think. Yeah. Um, and I, I almost don't like to tell him how good his acting is because I feel like he could just leave it all together and go to Hollywood and stop wrestling really quickly. Were you there, were you there the first time he did a, a, a dark match for us on, uh, on Lucha Underground? And um, he had to cut this promo after he, you know, squashed somebody. And somewhere in the squash, he knocked himself out. And uh, uh, Was that he, the Battle of the Kevins one where he cut the I promo? Forget or was what it was, but, but in the finish, he kind of knocked himself out and he kind of woke up and he got up and I was in the back in the control room and he just started stammering on the microphone and he was like, what? I mean, <laughs> anyone's going to pay the, it was when he was the toll man or whatever. You're going to, you're going to pay the toll. And I'm looking at DJ. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I, I think this is after he killed Vinny Massaro. Actually. Oh, this is the Vinny Massaro. Uh, and he completely botched it. And we were like, that was the worst promo we've ever had here. And he comes backstage and he, he then he kind of like woke up and we realized that he was kind of semi, only semi conscious when he cut that promo. And, uh, but ever since then, you know, <laughs> I have to dig that up in the dark matches, but, but, um, uh, you know, I agree with you. His promos are great. He just, he had a rocky start with us. The first time he put the I, I think his promos are great because he's actually a maniac killer. And when you think that he's not, that's when he's acting. I, I I follow him on Twitter, and sometimes I wonder, you know, where where, where the uh, mm -hmm. uh, skin the skin the skin sweaters are in the bottom in his basement. You know? I know his kryptonite though. It's uh, IHOP pancakes. 
They're delicious. Yeah, the bad thing is he's like on an all protein diet right now. So I would definitely steer clear of him today, right now, um, because you won't even be able to. Oh, we gotta hook him up with some of those protein pancakes, bro. They exist. <laughs> and maybe that's the trick, but that's his kryptonite is, is pancakes. I hop pancakes two oh. in the morning. He lived in Canada too long. He's <laughs> eating that lumberjack food. <laughs> um, well, I'm seriously looking forward to more of the contender. 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, 6 p.m. West Coast here on Epics. If you're not watching it, find a way to watch it. It's worth it, guys. And Eric uh, poured his his blood, sweat, and tears into that one. And so did the whole crew. Oh, the other thing I was going to tell you, Eric, I love the shot that's been two episodes now where, um, and it seems very candid, in where you're giving – the winning fighter a fist bump or something. Oh, I kind I, of hope yeah, dude, I, you know, edit, I, I, I never intend for those to be on camera. I genuinely just, you know, want, as the guy's walking out, I don't know if I'm going to get to see him after. I always try to see him after, but I, you know, I, I say something to him, you know, I try to at least, you know, usually I would, when I used to do this, I would get in the ring and I, the director would say, okay, we're set up, send the exiting fighter to the locker room. Um, and so I would kind of pull the guy aside, give him a little hug and say, okay, now go, you know, and right. uh, uh, this season I didn't have to, they were like, couldn't get out there fast enough. And so I would try and just at least catch them as they were walking past me. And of course, you know, my, my buddies, the editors, uh, put me in and you will find that I make an appearance and probably it should be a drinking game. Spot me in the, in That's the I think it turns into a Hitchcock thing. I, I, it, and Everybody both of the moments that you guys caught, though, were really good, candid moments and actually really added to the scene, regardless of the fact that it was the editors trying to sneak you in or whatever. Yeah. It just They just felt like good little moments. Um, so I like seeing you in there, too. Oh, okay. I, however, look like a complete douchebag in this episode because I wore my sunglasses through half of the fight. I was going to say, you made an appearance, didn't you? Both you and Jim. Yes, yes. But I'm wearing yeah. my sunglasses and then I'm wearing them again at the end because the actual reaction shot is cut in from one of those um, shot, hey, filmed hey, reaction up. shots earlier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So great. So I look like a D-bag at the very may, end of the episode. You may appear in a few, if I remember correctly. You might, you I might came to a few fights. Me. Yeah. I came to a few fights. It well, was thank fun. You, thank you for watching. I mean, it means a lot that you guys are watching it. And, and I say that not knowing if any of you guys are watching it, but... I, <laughs> Justin, so thank you for watching it and talking it up and tweeting about it. We need all the love we can get. Yeah, I promised Sergio I was going to keep tweeting about it. He yeah. he told me you got to keep tweeting about it. Let everybody know. Let all your wrestling fans know. So we're doing it. Sergio's a good dude. <laughs> um. Anyway, thank you, Eric, for joining thank us. You. Appreciate it, fellas. I'll see you on the next one. Have yeah. a good evening. Uh, bye, hey, Eric. Thank you. Right. Um. All right. Is Byron still around or did he leave? Byron, are you no, alive? No, uh, I think I'm Urban dead. left. Oh, Urban, Urban left. Died. And Byron's probably sleeping. I wow. wanted to to quickly get you guys' thoughts on All In, and that's pretty much all I care about, and then we can be done with this thing. Um, I want to run down this card a little bit, though, because I find some of this interesting and some of this to be dreadful. And I know there's a lot of hype behind it. Jim, you were thinking about going at one point, huh? Uh, well, the original plan was to go, and... Uh... Yeah, the tickets that were in my uh, in my cart never got processed because the site was shit, and basically I couldn't do anything. So, like I said, it sucks that I couldn't go, but I'm saving so much money by not going. Yeah, awesome. All right, so here's the card. We've got uh, Rey Mysterio, Bandito, and Phoenix versus the Young Bucks and Kota Ibushi. Basically, the most of the That's the Golden Elite. Fucking amazing. That's going to be one of the best matches, if not the best match. And I will be really disappointed if they don't throw money into the ring because every <laughs> match that I've seen Bandito in has earned money in thrown in, being thrown into the ring. You think a bunch of guys in Chicago are going to throw money in the ring? Yeah, oh, yeah, they're... for sure. Oh, dude, there Chicago has a very storied history of indie lucha. Um, they actually do a lot of shows there. Uh, Cubs fan gets to go to shows and shit. So yeah, all right. I mean, well, if we'll people, see. If, I, I, I like. I would love to see that happen at the end of the show. I just didn't really. That was not something that ever entered my mind that that we would if people, money thrown in the If ring. people are doing it in Seattle at a progress show, people in Chicago will be doing it. All right. Well, we don't do that yeah. shit here in LA. Throw some yen no, they, coins. At no, th we've been doing it pretty much every Bandito match at PWG. We've been throwing money into the ring. 
Uh, well, let's hope it happens. Um, here's another match I am definitely interested in. Kenny Omega versus Pentagon Jr. I think this is going to be the best match of the night. As much as that last one sounded great. These guys, I can't wait to see. They've been wanting to have this match for a long fucking time. They're both fans well, of each other. Since their PWG match, it was a tag match, right? And then there was another. It was a it I was a six was man tag. PWG show. They got they got uh, separated. Yeah, they right? got vetoed in the rematch uh, by New Japan, basically. I yeah. think honestly that we're going to see <laughs> the Pentagon that we don't see very often. I think we saw it in his last uh, Sammy Callahan match, um, and I think he'll take it even further than that. You know, he, he works a ton right now. He's been almost overly busy, but I think this is going to be the one for him this year, probably his, his best match. We'll see. Um, you think he's going to wrestle more high-flying Lucha, or do you think he's going to do – I think he's going to do all of that. I think he's going to I think he's gonna chain wrestle, Matt wrestle. I think he's going to do Lucha Libre spots. Um, I think him and Kenny are both probably – somewhere right now working on extra stuff for the match. I think they're going to really show out. I think, I think both of them equally want to prove that they are, that one of the two of them is the best wrestler out there right now. I don't know that I would agree with either of them, but I think they want to prove it. And I think this is their time to prove it. I think that this is a huge opportunity for Pentagon. And since this is going to be broadcast on new Japan world after, uh, after the live show, so he's going to get more eyes on him in Japan. I mean, he's he's been to Japan a little bit, but not as much as he should be. And, uh, I mean, he's in there enough that they've made him the default head and fire pro, so that's cool. But, well, and you know. look, and, and, and it doesn't even matter what kind of business they do after this one, either of them. This one is the business. This is the one that's going to go in the history books. This is the one that all the marks and all the smart people and all the inside people are watching. This is the one yeah. that everyone's going to talk about. This is the one that isn't tainted by what people think of a company or a promotion or any outside factor. So if they if they have something to prove, this is the time to prove it. And I really I really yeah. believe these two guys are going to try to do that. I don't you know, know if this I'm. Is kinda like, this is kind of like the India Madison Square Garden sellout. You know, it's you're you're the main event on a ten thousand seat arena, and you're the main event in a ten thousand seat arena, and you don't have like storylines and shits. So there's nothing to worry about getting over. Your name is selling it out. That's, yeah. I mean, this yeah. is pretty much reminiscent of being at a PWG show, but at a much grander scale. Yeah, a ten now, the size PWG. <laughs> More I than think it's a little strange though, because the card listing I the two the two card listings I've seen have the the Mysterio Bandito and Phoenix match above the Kenny Omega Pentagon match. Yeah, I think uh, they kind of hinted at it, it being the lead that uh, it's a co-main event, and that more than likely uh, the Bucks will be closing out the show. Interesting. Uh, with uh, simply because you know. All in is basically Cody and the Bucks mainly, and that uh, I don't think they want to make it seem like the IWGP champion is going to be an event while the NWA champion isn't. Gotcha. Sorry, right. I muted you for a second, yeah. Byron. We were hearing a lot of car noise from you. Uh, Still yeah, in. Go ahead and mute me. All right, I'll mute you, and then if you just unmute yourself or wave at me if you need to get back on. Um, yeah. Right. So then, right under that is Nick Aldis versus Cody Rhodes. Yes, I don't care. I actually, I, I've been seeing it a bit of it online, but and I would be uh, hard pressed to agree. But maybe this is the match that opens the show. That way, you get it out of the way, and if anything, it actually makes sense because if this is Cody in the Buck Show, Cody will probably be in want to be in the back producing, not worrying about his match. So if he gets his match done, he could just go straight to Gorilla and then work from there. Yeah, it's weird because I'm not. I'm not terribly excited about this match, but it could be good. I'm I'm willing to 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 reserve judgment and see and see what happens. Um, I do find it I weird though that cool. that this I don't know. I just feel like the heat going into this match isn't really there. But I don't know. It's because it's Nick Aldis and no one cares. Yeah. yeah <laughs> um, so then right after that, you got Jay Lethal um, versus the winner of the earlier. Uh, Battle Royal, which is 
<laughs> the over the budget. The over budget battle royal, which is what? Uh, Moose, Rocky Romero, Colt Cabana, who a cage is in there. Um, oh, I believe Jordan Grace is. Um, yeah. Billy uh, Gunn's in there. Billy Gunn is in it. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. I I'd be somewhat interested in seeing Billy Gunn versus uh, Jay Lethal, but yeah. I I I know for I know for a fact that there's going to be surprise entrance in it. Yes. Yeah. So. And I know one of the long-standing rumors is Neville, or a, I guess now that he's out of contract, Pac. So uh, who knows? We could see Pac versus Lethal, which I think would be amazing. It's going to be Lanny Poffo. <laughs> I mean, that's true. Does he Lanny still do is any a, leaping? Or is that done? Lanny, Lanny and uh, Jay Lethal are kind of doing a co-promotion kind of thing at StarCast together. So yeah. who knows? Yeah, and we also don't know if we're going to see... Uh, you know, Jay Lethal, but, or we're going to see Black Machismo. Yeah, and we have they're doing they're not only doing a co-promotion; they actually have a Brothers from a Different Mother shirt out T -shirt. on wrestling tees now. Yeah. Um, nice. Let's see what else we got here. We, oh, we got Okada versus Skrull. That's that's a good match. That'll be fun. Yeah, um, uh, Skrull already is trying to uh, to sell Rain Stopper shirts or something like. That. Yeah. yeah, Rain. Rainstopper, yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of those going around tonight. Then we got uh, Adam Page versus Joey Janela. Uh, I hope a no, street fight did. match. The reason, the only reason that could be good is because it's a street fight, um, and it's one of the few gimmicked matches of the night. This is a guy jumping off of high shit. Oh, somebody's phone is ringing very loud. That was mine. It was weird. I'm finding uh, – so Janela and Paige are both going to be finding different places to jump off of that are very high. So yeah. Yeah, but Paige will be the safe one. Yeah, he'll be the one that just lands on his feet. And then Janela will die, but for our amusement. Okay, so this next one, this is pretty uh, – I don't know what to make of this. You've got the Green Arrow – Mm -hmm. um, or, or the actor who plays the Green Arrow, Stephen Amell, versus Christopher Daniels, who I'm sure will carry Stephen through this whole match. And Stephen's wrestled a couple of times. We saw him involved in a few things over the last few years. Um, it, so the, the the match he had uh, uh, at in San Antonio it was him and the Bucks versus SCU, and for the small amount of time he was in the ring and actually doing anything he was actually pretty good the so guy I is imagine, in shape and and, yeah. and he does most of his own stunts on the show now they've taught him how to do stuff that he never knew how to do before he was green arrow so i can't imagine that uh, a smart guy like that who's in good shape couldn't pick up um a few good wrestling moves and, and he's had a couple years now i mean his first appearance was what, two years ago and he's been apparently practicing with christopher daniels and with cody from time to time so who knows? I mean, this is a good place to do it. You put some. Star I would power dare on say, there. I would dare say that it's probably more than a little bit. Uh, the segment that they shot for the last uh, being the elite and the last uh, all in thing that Cody's been doing on his channel, I'm pretty sure that it's been nonstop training for Stephen Amell whenever he's not shooting. Which good for him. I mean, this guy is a total old school wrestling fan. Yeah. Uh, so much so that like. He remembers going to house shows with Dino Bravo, right. so I don't question his commitment. It's whether or not he can go long distance, and by long distance, yeah. I mean like seven to ten minutes with Christopher Daniels. You know, I went to I went to house shows with Dino Bravo too, and not to speak ill of the dead, but Dino Bravo fucking sucked. <laughs> it was Look, more about the fact that he was a Canadian wrestler. Oh, okay. I, Daniels, I, I like think that Christopher fire. Daniels can can carry a lot of people, especially a guy who's plenty in good shape. If the guy, uh, my only concern with anybody like that is when they get in the ring, especially in his first one on one match, does the guy know how to bump well enough to protect himself? Or you know, and I don't think he's going to have to take a ton of bumps, um, but at the same time, he is going to have to bump a couple of times in that match for it to be anything. And you always worry about that. I mean, some guys don't know how to tuck their chin. They get in there and they're green and bad things happen. And you don't want to see that happen to some big TV star on this. Event. Hope, it's supposed to be a big event. I hope they go I on. feel like he, he's going to be prepared as well as he can be uh, being trained by both Cody and, uh, and Christopher Daniels. I hope they go under the ring and then he comes out as green arrow and Daniels comes out as fucking curry man and gives him the fucking spicy drop. Cause curry man. 
one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Chris I remember Curry. Curry all right, but Curry man, fuck yeah. And it's so What are you talking man. about? Those are two different people. Oh yeah, I know. I just I'm, I I didn't say they were the same person. I just said I liked them both. You know. No, okay. whatever. You can drop the kayfabe on that. Christopher Daniels has such a unique posture that there is. I think we've it had was a so easily identifiable as Curry Man from the first second. It was I think we've had well, a even on the show today. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, be- like even. The only difference between Curry Man and Christopher Daniels back when they were both wrestling was the fact that Curry Man wore a half shirt and a mask, but everything else was exactly the same. same. Exactly. It was amazing. It was a dope move, and Daniels never pulled out the spicy drop, which was uh, kind of, yeah, I like that move. It was kind of like a burning hammer, but not. It was like the shitty burning hammer uh, that uh, Tyler Rex used to do. Um, all right, yeah. last two matches on this card. The ladies' match, Madison Rain, Tessa Blanchard, Britt Baker, and Chelsea Green. Uh, huge fan of Chelsea. Um, and, that will be um, that'll be an interesting match. I want to. I'll be curious to see what the work rate is like in that match because I believe all those women want to show out as well. I believe that they are all in positions in their career right now where they have something to prove. And, all uh, in positions. Did you do that on purpose? Uh, I did not. <laughs> and then the last match is uh, the Briscoes versus Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky. That's going to be a dope match. Mm-hmm. So that's, I think, that's slated, that's slated as the opening match. But we'll see if that's really what becomes the opening match or not. Well, I believe that Zero Hour is going to be uh, that match as well as the Over the Budget Battle Royal. I don't know if there's going to be any other matches aside from those two. Since zero hour is one hour. Right. Uh, but yeah, I believe they may do like a, a surprise match. They said they've been hinting at it, but I don't I I honestly don't know what other I think some things are going to change around. I think some things are going to change around. So zero hour um, is going to be on WGN at what, seven? Uh, so so Fight it's seven TV o'clock. isn't going to have it, right? Fight TV uh, is not airing zero hour? Uh, no, so uh, Zero Hour is exclusively on WGN America. It starts at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Uh, it's it, it was weird because I think some people were thinking because it's central time that they're actually shooting it, but since they're promoting it East Coast time, it's going to be 6 o'clock for Zero Hour, 7 o'clock for All In, and uh, yeah, three-hour difference for East Coast. Interesting. I thought the East Coast it was airing starting at seven, and then all in is all in is starting at seven. Gotcha. Okay. Well, there you go. You got it from from the Jim Skay Nakamura himself. Um, and if anybody knows indie wrestling, that's the man right there. Uh, yeah. I don't know how you East Coast wrestling fans did that shit, man. Like, I I feel like wrestling's on too late on the West Coast. And, <laughs> you no. Know, I'm still getting um, used to how early things are on the West Coast, and I've been here for 20 years yeah. now. But waking up to 9 a.m. football, and then like every time there's a UFC, I'm like doing something with my normal day, and I'm like, oh crap, it's 5 p.m. The UFC's already. <laughs> like I still See, haven't gotten used to it. I've been out here for over eight years, and I'm still kind of getting used to being on West Coast time because you know i remember having to go to work the next day after staying up to see raw at 11 15. yeah that's what it was Casey. Night. like we would just dude we would stay up and like if you were watching ufc that was a party night it was always a saturday and that shit just ended at 2 a.m and you just knew yeah, that well, was what was going to happen and you were like that's why whenever you are watching it exactly that's so it was always like oh well ufc's tonight but we gotta go to the bar it's like Ah, don't worry. We won't. We don't have to get there till midnight. Yeah, It'll like you wouldn't even show up until eleven thirty midnight, you know, and go to the t- tilted kilt or wherever you were going to watch it at or B Dubs and and wait in line at eleven o'clock to get into a freaking restaurant or bar to watch it. Landmark Americana, Glassboro, New Jersey. That That's, was our spot. That was the spot, huh? All right, guys. Well, I'm all out of things to say. I'm glad Eric got to stop by and talk about the contender. It really is worth checking out if you haven't done that. Um, and of course, Lucha Underground Wednesdays on El Rey is still oh, uh, swing. Quick, real quick, uh, Fire Pro. Um, oh yeah, Fire Pro. Hey, I told uh, you I was going to give you that throw the whole time, and I never yeah, did. You don't know this, Justin, but you're already in the PlayStation Four version of the game. Byron uploaded him and you. I'll be up by the end of this weekend. We'll we'll do Meef and Jim too. We'll get you guys in there. And uh, my pencil will be up. Byron did a Kevin Cross. So that's up right now. 
uh, for download. And uh, yeah, so you'll have the whole MMM show. Game's great. Buy the Takayama DLC. If you have it on PS4, it's three bucks. All proceeds go to Yoshihiro Takayama's medical bills. So help a brother out. Yeah, I've been hearing nothing but amazing reviews for this game, and I have yet to play it. So buy it, Jim. Buy it. Oh my god, I need a PS1. I can't even play Fortnite against my friends. See, what sucks is Jim will play it for like a week and then buy Spider Man and play the shit out of that. Also, uh, only on PlayStation 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my buddy Zach, friend of the show, he. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, when the new Halo game comes out, what are you guys going to do then? What? Not, what? Yeah. I don't give a shit about first person shooters, Justin. Yeah, shout out to the Marvel Games team for their crazy work on Spider-Man. It's been nuts. Oh, it looks amazing. Uh, my friend Zach bought that special edition PS4. Uh, it looks beautiful from the pictures I've seen. Uh, he didn't get his yet. That It comes when the game drops. But yeah, it looks amazing. And Because uh, it's Spider-Man, and he's fucking amazing Spider-Man right there. Boom! All right, well, I got to get yeah. out of here. So for... Our homie Jim, Jimmy V, our homie Byron Turk, our man Urban Heretic who stopped by for a minute. Of course, the professor, the two podcast kid. Woo! And for me, myself, and I, and this lovely Gleason's Jim shirt. And Thank not you, for me. Eric. Everybody eat watch shit, the shit, loaf. Eat shit. We meat. don't know where Meef is. Meef is like hungover, drunk, and or tired. But until next time, stay calm and stay in the mix. Eat it.